Hi, I'm Paven Brixey. I'm Annalise Parker. And I'm Emerald McCarty. We are from Sequoia Middle School. This is a Triumph and Tragedy documentary. This documentary is about Di Walt Disney Studios versus Fleischer Studios. You've probably heard of Walt Disney Studios. They are a very success successful animation studio located in California. They have many animated movies and shorts, even their own theme park. But what you might not know is about the other huge animation studio that rivaled with them in the 1920s. This animation studio was called Fleischer Studios. They invented many things, including the rotoscope. It's an old gadget you still used today. The rotoscope is an animation to st tool used to draw animation characters over real-life video and photograph. It's arguably the Fleischer's brothers' best invention, but it wasn't their only. They also used videos to make their looks and mu movements more realistic. You still have the Fleischer Studios created many characters, some of which you probably still know today, including Coco the Clown, Bimbo, a little humanoid dog, and more popular characters like Betty Booth and Popeye the Sailor. At first, Fleischer Studios created Coco the Clown, one of their most well-known cartoons. About two years later, Disney created Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, who became more popular than Coco. Although Oswald wasn't legally Disney Studios' character, he was leased to Universal Pictures, who later betrayed his company. Later, Fleischer made Betty Boop, one of their most popular characters. Disney was desperate for another character after the Universal Pictures ordeal, so he and his partner, Oob Erix, created Mickey Mouse, one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known, cartoon character in the world. Fleischer and Disney's style were polar opposites. Fleischer sorts were set in cities and urban areas, while Disney's were often places like forests or cottages. They were more scenic. Fleischer's animations were also more dark and mature things than Disney's, another reason Disney came out on top in the end. Fleischer's themes usually consisted on topics of death, cults, and sexual themes. It also had many demonic themes to go along with their animations, which could not be very kid-friendly at times. Since Fleischer's main target audience was older teens and adults, and cartoons appealed to children, they did not do as well as Disney, whose main target audience was children. Disney's approach to the plot was very different. They make stories of fairy tales with beautiful scenery, beautiful people, villains, daring rescues, and happy endings. Disney Studios' first fully animated movie was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It is still a very noteworthy movie to this day. It was such a success, in fact, that the Oscars made a custom award just for the movie. A normal human statue with seven smaller statues right behind it. More popular princess movies include older movies like Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, and Cinderella, and newer movies like Rapunzel, Frozen, and Moana. Disney took down Fleischer with a smart and stealthy tactic, advertising. Their lovable characters mixed with Walt Disney's smart advertising abilities gave them a big advantage. Although Fleischer had some advertising, for example, Betty Boop posters, clocks, etc., Disney was stronger in that area, which is another reason Disney came out on top. While it's not exactly clear when the feud started, a good estimate would be around 1928. Ask anyone, what was the first cartoon with synchronized sound? And they'll most likely say, Steamboat Willie. If you don't know what that is, it is a Walt Disney Studios short film with synchronized sound starring Mickey Mouse that aired in 1928. But the truth is, on April 13th, 1926, Fleischer Studios released My Old Kentucky Home, which had a dog saying, follow the ball and join in everybody, synchronized with the dog saying it in the cartoon. But Disney marketing and advertising led everyone to believe it was the first. Understandably, the Fleischer brothers were not happy about this. Fleischer Studios despised Disney so much, their early cartoons often had evil Mickey Mouses in them. One example of this is the short Bimbo's Initiation, aired in 1931, where Bimbo the dog is locked in the sewer system by an evil Mickey. After being locked in the sewers, Bimbo is confronted by a cult. They repeatedly ask him, when Bimbo refuses, the people would then torture him and ask again. After a while of torture, Bimbo finally agrees, and it turns out the entire cult was made of Betty Boops. Weird, I know. Fleischer Studios was forced to make her tiny skirt longer and alter her personality. Her parents, which was also, al which was also altered, which caused her once curvy curves, made her look more chubby. These changes made her less appealing to the main target audience, and her popularity went down. In the end, all these faults and disadvantages led to the closing of Fleischer Studios. They were heavy in debt and couldn't stop the impending doom. 
Max and Dave Fleischer were both forced to give up all copyright information to their distributor, Paramount Pictures, after being fired. They, the, the company was then renamed Famous Studios. The brothers went their separate ways, though they both continued to make cartoons. Max became, made television cartoons and educational films, while Dave supervised in Columbia and Universal Studios. Disney never retired. He worked up until his last breath. He died at age 65 from lung cancer right after the beginning of building Walt Disney World. Disney died with a legacy. But unfortunately, Fleisch, Max and Dave Fleischer's names were almost completely erased from history. While Fla Flash Fleischer was we'll cut that out. when Fleischer was left to die and die out and never be remembered, Disney was triumphantly and moved on. And this concludes our presentation.